So this is uh, based on joint work between Eddie and myself. We have both been concerned for some time with the issue of uh, separate identification of probabilities and utilities when preferences are state dependent. Uh, I like uh, to claim that uh, efficient medical treatment comes from the combination of the probabilities of the doctors with the utilities of the patients. Now clearly medical treatment uh, uh, arises in many contexts where preferences are clearly state dependent. How you live if an operation is successful <coughs> or not successful is very different. Uh, <coughs> Yet, the basic model <coughs> of subjective expected utility <coughs> maximization uh, does not allow for state-dependent preferences. It is very easy to extend it to state-dependent uh, preferences, but then you do not have separate identification of probabilities and utility scales because the probability multiplies a state-dependent utility and uh, if the two always come as a product, you do not identify them separately. I have been concerned with this question for 60 years. Uh, uh, starting with my doctoral dissertation. Eddie is a newcomer, you have only 40 years on the subject or something like that and uh, I don't really know about you but uh, <coughs> we uh, contributed along parallel but separate lines. I was mostly concerned with moral hazard, meaning unobserved actions that affect the probabilities, whereas Eddie has been concerned with explicit actions affecting the probabilities, and importantly introduced observations uh, as another uh, source of information. Why actions and observations coming is easy to understand if you are trying to isolate the impact of a probability and the impact of the event on utilities and you want to separate these you would like to observe choices involving the same utilities with different probabilities how do you get different probabilities? By being in a framework where you have access to actions that influence the probabilities. And in the case of health, of course, there is plenty of uh, evidence to that effect. Or you could uh, make observations that modify the probabilities. And my purpose this morning is to present my view of how these two approaches complement each other for a very specific instance of observations. Eddie has been concerned with more general uh, formulations. Uh, what I hope to uh, show you is how these two sources complement each other and how this can be done in a technically quite elementary manner compared with the papers that both Eddie and I have published which are certainly not elementary in terms of reading. Uh, <coughs> we will start from uh, uh, a well-known paper now, if you start from a known paper 
you better make sure it's a good paper. And uh, how do you know that? Uh, I think AAA is the best sign. And in this case, there is a AAA paper, Anscombe and Almond. So that will be, you know that paper, Bob, don't you? <laughs> and uh, you agree that it's AAA, Anscombe and Almond. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, the framework of that paper will be extended to introduce actions which don't belong there and in the second part observations. Uh, the basic decision theory model uh, relies on exogenous circumstances called states on which uh, you place bet by staking outcomes. The easiest is to think about outcomes as uh, amounts of money. That's very simple, but they can be much more general and also can take the form of lotteries. <coughs> when you include the actions, a decision will be a pair consisting of an action and a bet placing outcomes on the states, <coughs> and in general a consequence will be a triplet where you have an outcome, like an amount of money, the action which may have preference implications, and the state which again will have preference implications. Okay, do not hesitate to interrupt for clarification. You don't have to say that here. <laughs> that was a clarification for me. What does A do? Where does A appear at all? Now, A is not part of the Tripoli model. Uh, uh, A appears as uh, an element of the decision. For instance, if you are concerned about a health problem, you may take an action like to have an operation or not to have the operation, and you may take an insurance which has implications in terms of uh, the outcome. What's the A bet, a bet would be like the insurance company, which changes the consequences of whatever event obtains, whereas the action is a way of influencing the probabilities of the different events. Oh, so, I mean, something is missing here. At this point, A is completely abstract and does not interact with theta or with Z. <laughs> the model we want to use uses as primitives a set of states, a set of actions, given set from which choices could be made, <coughs> a set of outcomes, and then a bet is a mapping from states to outcomes, and an action is uh, <laughs> an element of a given set. And the decision consists in choosing both an action and a bet. Don't bet against both actions. And what it excludes. I don't know. At this point, A is not connected to anything. So I don't know. I guess in the next slide, it's through the utility function, well, so something will happen. <laughs> so, yes. something. Uh, how, so how is that different from states? You are given a set of states as part the of the definition. The, outcome. the state, the, uh, the bet, through the bet, the state determines the outcome Z. But the action at this point does not do anything. So I, I'll wait, I'll wait. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but you accept that I may give you a set of actions. Yeah. And uh, in this case, you don't know how to choose one. But hopefully in a few minutes, it will be better. <laughs>
no further questions on this, uh, then uh, <coughs> the preferences are defined over decisions, the choice of an action and <coughs> a bet. Again, let me use the example of having a medical problem for which you could go through surgery as one possible treatment, or you could go without surgery. <coughs> there are implications through the state of health that may be very bad or better or whatnot, and that, uh, of course, depends uh, <coughs> on the uncontrolled elements as well as on the action that you take. You find it unnatural if no, no, I... No, I, I, don't, I don't understand action. How does action interact with, with state, consequence, something? Is it, 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 you, have, pre you have preference so over decision. So you have preference over action. Is one of them. Mm. And action is one of them. One yeah, but it's not connected to anything. It's like a product. You, you, okay. You the stage is one of the components. The action the stage is Okay, so, so it's like for each action I have a different model. Okay, it's for each All right, I very good. Model, very good. On, so, on and, theta, and, and now you just uh, put them all together. So they are very very good. good. I will start with a single action. Okay. Then we are back to basically the Ansgar yeah. Bauman Savage framework but with state-dependent preferences. And then, when I introduce more actions, we will uh, see that you are quite right in guessing this is like putting different models next to each other. And then, okay. So, uh, no time to go into details. The beginning with a single action you understand, is classical. So the preferences are over the bets, which are called acts in Hans Gombaumann. They like A's all over the place. Okay. And uh, you start with the so-called von neumann morgenstern basic axioms. We call their independence continuity, non-trivialities is you have some choice. <coughs> and then, uh, to go beyond von Neumann Morgenstern, who use known probabilities, uh, <coughs> you need two more axioms. In Anscom Aumann, the preferences are state independent, but we want to allow for state dependent preferences. So, what we want is that conditionally on any states, the preferences over outcomes be well defined. And that is uh, one condition. Uh, and then there is one more condition called reversal of order, which has been uh, a genuine uh, contribution of the Anscombe Bauman approach compared to what came before. Uh, just think that. Uh, you have two states, operation is successful, operation fails, and uh, <coughs> we talk about a bet where if heads you get 10,000 euros, if tails you get 2,000. Now this could be described in two ways. One way says <coughs> the outcomes are determined by heads or tails after the state is observed. And the other approach is to say there are two bets, one which gives 10,000, the other which gives 2,000, and the toss of the coin decides ahead of the observations which of the two applies. The reversal of order assumption says in this model, where you do not do anything between the initial choice and the terminal realization, it doesn't matter that the bet be drawn <laughs> before or after the states. That's reversal of order. And then with these uh, assumptions, 
you get a formulation of expected uh, subjective utility. Uh, we are keeping the action fixed, so you can forget about A, it is constant here, and it says a bet B is preferred or indifferent to B prime. If the expected utility is uh, higher in terms of some probability distribution, where am I here? Yes. Uh, <coughs> so, and as you see here, of course, clearly, <coughs> you could rescale probabilities and state dependent utilities, and there is nothing in the model that can separate out alternative scalings. So, the probabilities and utilities are jointly unique in the sense that the product is uniquely defined but not separately identified. Okay? Uh, ah, uh, if you have uh, different actions, but you are not yet with different actions. A is now a singleton, yes? A is now a singleton, but now we introduce multiple actions. And the reason to do that is that with multiple actions, as we shall see, we can separate utilities from probabilities in favorable circumstances. The intuition is clear that uh, if we have a way of influencing the probabilities, the way we do so will reveal which states are favorable and which are unfavorable, and we are on the way to identification. To do that, we must first of all assume that the conditional preferences are independent of the actions. Now, one could deal with a more general model, but uh, for today, we deal with uh, actions that do not modify the conditional preferences over outcomes. <coughs> and uh, now, with several actions, we have a family of probability measures conditional on the actions. <coughs> and uh, this is essentially an extension of the uh, single action case. Sorry, I'll show my ignorance. If, if the, if, when you had just one action, you said that the probabilities and utilities are not fully determined, only the product. But if you add the condition that some of probabilities is one, how can you how can you rescale probabilities and utilities to get the same answer? Uh, and we can do it uh, right here. Uh, you can multiply p of theta by some psi sub theta. <coughs> and divide u of b theta by psi of theta, so the product is unchanged, and then you have to rescale so that the new probabilities add up to 1, but that's just multiplication by a positive scalar. Makes and no it's difference. It's theta dependent in scale. Right. Okay. Now, let's see how we can go inside the information contained in the choice of actions. And uh, this, I think, is the main contributions of uh, Eddie and I getting together, uh, and you will see why. Consider two actions, surgery, no surgery, two bets, amounts, in euros, uh, <coughs> depending on theta, theta the state of health tomorrow, which may have 10, 20 different descriptions depending upon 
what happens, but we realize, of course, that they will be influenced by whether or not the operation was undertaken. Now, I take a very simple case, two actions, two bets, and uh, two lotteries. One lottery associates action A with bet B, and action A prime with bet B prime. The other lottery mixes the other way. A prime B, A B prime. So, A might be surgery, A prime no surgery. B <coughs> might be full insurance, B prime might be limited insurance of the ensuing medical expenses. And then the lottery L will say, <coughs> we will toss a coin if heads, operation, full insurance. If tails, no operation, little insurance. That's a well-defined option. The other lottery says, if heads, no operation, but full insurance. If tails, operation, no insurance. And the question now is, let's compare these two bets. That's what does that mean? Two lotteries, not bets. What do you mean by full insurance? Uh, theta is a number of possible values describing the evolution of your health tomorrow. And uh, there will be what? What evolution? Of your health. Your health. Whether you are healthy. Of course, you are so healthy. You do not worry only about that, value, you only one value. The evolution of my health, yes. Of, yes, and that may involve expenses, and these expenses may be insured or not. I want B to be some bet, uh, and uh, the interest of this condition is to force you to evaluate different mixtures between bets and actions. And the way to, that we do it is to consider lotteries where you modify the mixture between action and bets. Like to operate or not operate with or without insurance. That's intuitive enough, right? And then if you are indifferent between these two lotteries, and you remember the theorem on representation in terms of expected utilities, then if you are indifferent, it must be that the expected difference in utilities between B and B prime is the same under A and under A prime. That's elementary algebra, starting from the theorem. But now look at this. We have a vector of utility differences, and we take a weighted sum with conditional probabilities, probabilities that are conditional on the actions. Now just imagine that we have a full set of different probabilities. If there are t states, we would need t different probabilities. Then we have here a full dimensional matrix. And if that matrix is non-singular, the vector of differences here must be constant. Ah, but that means we have identified the relative units of scale of the utilities in the different states. And the logic is elementary. It says we will know whether it is important for you, say, 
to have a longer life expectancy. How do we know it is important? Because you will insist on the operation if the operation is promising. That's how the choice of action reveals the utility differences across different states. Okay, I see a number of heads uh, nodding. I see one. What, what prevents you here again, multiplying all the, all the pi, taking pi, multiplying by some f of theta, and dividing u, comma theta, by the same f of theta? But we have several vectors here. So, dependence of a. so that means a doesn't matter. That's what it says here. Well, now, <coughs> what am I, I'm missing something. if it is the case, if it is the case that these two lotteries are indifferent, then this value with an A here is equal with A prime. With a prime. And suppose there are only two states, theta and theta prime, then if p of theta given a and p of theta given a prime are different, this equality pins down this difference here as being equal to... You take all the pipes theta, or all thetas, and multiply by some f of theta, okay? okay. And it's a function of theta, and take all the u's, comma theta, and divide by f of theta. I would still satisfy all the equations, exactly, nothing will change. It was your argument from before, I just listened what you said. What uh, I do it for all thetas, <coughs> for all a's, sorry, I do it for all a's. But with the same f, f or with the same f, the same f, the same f <laughs> then of course uh, you will have no way of rescaling the f so that the p theta oh, add up to one. one for all hmm? You must okay. for each a to okay. add up to one. Okay, okay? So you are with me? Very good. So now I change the, I change the <laughs> so, <coughs> how now could we identify the existence of a full set of linearly independent probabilities? And uh, the way to do that uh, is fairly simple. Uh, the conditions that we wanted to meet you can always find bets that meet them because there are conditions on utility differences between two bets and you can adjust the bets so that you obtain utility differences that fit in the formula. Hmm? Uh, how do you know that you have found a full set of linearly independent conditional probabilities? Well, it's fairly simple. If you have two Bs that satisfy the condition, that is, for these two Bs, you can <coughs> uh, reverse the association with the A's in my lottery. Suppose that taking one of the B's fixed and choosing one element from the other, choosing one element from the other says whether you will look for the other above or below the first one and by how much. If having fixed one bet and one element for a single theta from the other, there is a unique way of completing the other. That means that the relative units of scale are fully determined. <coughs> no room to play with bets 
and keep the property that these lotteries are indifferent for all A's. So there is an operational way of identifying the property that units of scale of the state dependent utilities are separately identified from the probabilities. Now, it remains true that this will give us a subjective expected utility result with separately identified probabilities and utilities, but we have done that under an assumption of action-independent utilities. The conditional preferences for given theta have been assumed independent of the actions. There is an open question that remains whether one uh, could <coughs> find conditions under which the action independence of conditional utilities is firm. But now I have only 15 minutes left, I understand. So I better move to the uh, observations that will be faster and have some time. Okay. Uh, about observations, uh, there is one example that uh, my friend Eddie likes. Uh, uh, he has a friend living in Florida. And a few years back, there was a cyclone named Eddie that was raging <laughs> across the Atlantic. So his friends called him and said, Eddie, are you coming to Florida or are you headed for Tobago? And uh, that was an important uh, question because if you know that the cyclone is coming. If you knew it is coming to Florida, you might decide uh, to go and uh, spend the weekend in Chicago, or you might decide to close your house completely and uh, <coughs> bring some food to the basement and stay in the basement, etc. There are different strategies. So it is important to ascertain the probability that this cyclone is heading for Florida and not further south. Now, if you ask the meteorologists, they tell you, tomorrow we will know almost for sure. Yeah, because no, 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 because the cyclone is moving. We know where it is today, but tomorrow it will be much closer to shore and whether it has moved north or south, it will still be probabilistic, but the probabilities tomorrow will be more reliable than today. So uh, you ask the meteorologist, and uh, could you tell us what uh, you expect to happen by tomorrow? And he says, yes, on the basis of the situation today, and our experience, there is two chance in three that we will find tomorrow a location threatening Florida, and one chance in three that we will find tomorrow a location threatening Trinidad. That's a clear example. So it means that tomorrow there will be an observation where the cyclone is tomorrow. And on the basis of that observation, there is still time to decide to go away for the weekend, close the house or what not. Now, the probabilities of the observation. Well, better trust the meteorologist. What else could you do? So, I am here, and this is not something that uh, Eddie is fully endorsed, 
of course, he feels responsible for the cyclone and so on. And so on. But uh, because I'm now going to model observations with known probabilities. The probabilities of the observation, not of the final outcome. Uh, I just borrow them from the meteorologist in this example. It could be from a medical research laboratory. It could be from the central bank. In some countries uh, in Greece, I that I would rely on the uh, probabilities of the central bank. But so this is an extension to observations of a statistical nature with given probabilities. And uh, if the probabilities are given, it is very simple to construct a partition of the observations that are equiprobable. I told you a minute ago, probability heading for Florida two-third heading for Tobago one-third. Is that what I said or the other one? Yes. Now, you could simply take observations of heading for Florida and obtaining heads in tossing a coin. Probability one-third. Heading for Florida tails in flipping a coin, one-third. So if you have a partition, which I label here, E star I into equiprobable observations, it is easy to find a counterpart to what I was doing uh, with the association of bets and uh, actions. Uh, let us look at uh, two bets, B and B prime, and now I will propose starting from B prime to replace it by B if and only if element I of my partition occurs. So for instance, B prime is little insurance, B is high insurance, if and only if the observation is I, I shift to high insurance. Otherwise not. It might be insurance on the house that you own in Florida. If the observation says uh, there is a risk of cyclone, I immediately take a higher insurance. That's the idea. And now uh, we can look at uh, pairs of bets. Everything we've been doing is pairs of bets, not single bets, uh, such that going from B prime to B, given one element of the equiprobable partition, is indifferent. Doesn't matter which one, right? And uh, that means, in fact, that uh, <laughs> these bets, BB prime, have again a property that the utility difference given theta weighted sum is independent, this time of i. Before I did not have i, but independence of a. The logic basically is the same. The source of information on the desirability of the different states is different. In one case, it was actions that influence the probabilities. In this case, it is uh, information that is added and on which I can act. So, <coughs> again, you can detect operationally that you may find a B and a B prime for which uh, the information is full. This we call strict. <coughs> and uh, we then have the results that with strict information, 
the probabilities and units of scale of state de uh, dependent utilities in theorem one. Now we say are separately identified. We do not limit ourselves to uh, action independent preferences because for the observations that would be irrelevant. And what is perhaps more important, second uh, result, we can now identify the origins of the state dependent utilities. How many minutes? Five minutes. Very good. So, uh, I hope that I have uh, shared with you the property that uh, this problem of separating utilities and probabilities is susceptible of uh, solutions coming either from actions that affect the uh, probabilities of the events or from information entailing implications for these probabilities and on which you can act. It is very important to my eyes that you can combine these two types of information because typically they will bear on different aspects of reality. And, uh, of course, to have full identification, you need a very rich set <coughs> of potential actions or a very rich set of potential observations. When you put them together, you are capitalizing on information, on observation, dependent actions. So if you have uh, uh, n observations and m actions, there are n m possibilities from which you should retrieve t, the number of states, uh, conditions on the probabilities and utilities. There remains more to be done uh, in uh, this domain. One would like to go from the states to events and work with events because a full listing of states in most cases would be preposterous. Uh, <coughs> and uh, one would like possibly to extend uh, the analysis to action dependent references. Eddie has done some of that uh, under another uh, treatment of uh, observations. Uh, uh, the report essentially is, uh, this is an area where some progress could be reported and more progress may be in sight. So yes. in, some, in some sense, if, if you don't have this separation, or what I think that's what you call strictness, then I really don't care uh, about the fact that I cannot distinguish, because for anything that is relevant, I get the same, the same thing, even though I cannot separate the two. And if I can separate, it means that, if, sorry, if it matters, then I should be able to separate. Is that a fair way to say? Uh, <coughs> uh, I think there is a very general proposition in decision theory, which is somewhat elaborated in a paper by Oman and Dres, uh, 2000 something, uh, uh, that uh, indeed you can identify parameters to the extent that they are relevant to decision. And in all cases where the separation of probabilities and utilities is immaterial, well, then you cannot infer them. 
very interesting exercise for you. You take uh, the presentation of Bernard de Meyer this morning and ask yourself for all the parameters in his model. <coughs> Are they identified in observations of behavior or not? If you can answer that question by lunchtime, <laughs> that will be very good. Don't care about the separation, then I can tell you a more general model that applies to decision making in the garden and the car. But then you don't need the state independence. Um, so apparently, for a purpose, because you would actually have a presentation of the But the more important uh, is that when you think about the original work of Savage, it's called the, the foundation of the The idea there was derive a behavioral foundation for a prior. The prior have no meaning, and we are bas basically back to square one. Not identifiable, we are basically back, so we don't have a theory of the prior. And actually, in this case, it makes sense to say instead of choosing a utility function, which is state independent, choose the utility function that depends on the state, so the prior will always be uniform. Then you can start every Bayesian analysis from the uniform prior. So the whole process of purpose of this exercise was to identify a unique prior of the Fine, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so um, first uh, I would like to say that uh, the choice of the topic was uh, done for some reason. Uh, the first reason is that, in fact, the first time I, I talk about this topic was in Jerusalem uh, in 1975. There was uh, the second Belgo-Israeli conference and uh, and we we were in the Belgian uh, the Belgian house and uh, so it and uh, what is uh, very nice is that uh, many people who were there are, are here of course the sad side was that Jean Francois was part of the Belgian uh, the Belgian and even Yossi is here <laughs> Jean Francois was part of the the Belgian group, mm -hmm. there was Jacques, Jacques Jaez also was there. And so um, I think it's a kind of souvenir to come back to this, uh, to this topic, which also another reason is that it's uh, somewhat uh, related to some work of, uh, of Jean-Francois on the, on the uh, Exante Incentive Compatible Core, and I will say a word about it to show the, to show the relation, although I have no no new result about uh, about the core. Okay, so um, my 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 purpose here is to take the very a very very simple uh, framework. Uh, uh, the advantage of taking this very very simple framework of direct mechanism uh, design with pure revelation, so no, no moral hazard, uh, will be that uh, everything will be elementary. So we can, everything will be proved in some sense very simply. And so uh, it will be very easy to, but in, uh, in, um, on the way, uh, this will survey, this will survey some recent results, which has been uh, achieved, and especially, um, result about uh, individual rationality. And this is mostly the purpose of this talk, is to introduce 
uh, individual rationality. Uh, now, the, of course, uh, typical applications in this uh, area are the, the funding of a public good or uh, the, redu the reduction of a public bad or the, uh, the design of auctions. Um, so the, but there are new applications which I don't know very well, but uh, some people are doing some work about uh, computational mechanism design. Uh, and this is due to the fact that uh, now with the uh, internet, you can get a lot of information on individuals because you, you, you have these cookies, huh? you have these cookies in the, uh, and, they, and they, 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 they uh, as time goes on, they, they, they get a picture of you, of your taste, of, your, of what you think and so on. So this is really a way to get a lot of data about individuals and then you can design a mechanism which will take into account all these, all these information. That's, that's all what I can say on this, but I think it's a, a, new, a new area of applications for this kind of, uh, this kind of mechanism. So the framework is, is very simple. We imagine a public uh, decision involving N agents and a set of alternatives, capital X. Uh, each agent has privately known characteristics, theta i, so we are back to the incomplete information model that Eric uh, <coughs> described. And uh, we suppose that uh, everything is finite. Um, now, to each type uh, theta i, we associate a quasi-linear utility function. Uh, this ui depends on x and theta, and but some, we will also examine, in some cases, they reduce this to the private value case, in which case uh, uh, ui depends only on theta i. Okay, so that's the private value. And then we have uh, subjective probability distributions on, for each type on the types of, uh, and each individual i on the types of the others. Okay, and so this is, this is really the, the given element in terms of the beliefs in the model. Now, we assume consistency. Some result will not uh, require consistency, but those on individual rationality will will require uh, consistency, so I assume consistency and I assume that all the probabilities are strictly positive to simplify everything. What? what? Why I just a constant for clever? Why? It doesn't depend even on its type? No, no, why I is just to say, to show that the, the, the utility is uh, separable, but you, it will be the trend, it will correspond to something in the model. <coughs> so it's just, uh, just a variable like that. It's, uh, just to indicate that th this dimension is separable. Okay. okay, now we consider, as I said, we will consider direct mechanism, where the set of action of each agent is just a copy of theta i, so the, 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 the idea is that an agent is asked to report his type, uh, and then based on this report and the reports of the others, you have a public decision rules which chooses a, an alternative, and then we have this transfer, which uh, which are given to the individual agents. Okay, this is the so there is a public decision rule and a transfer rule. Now, some very uh, classical property: the, the public decision rule is called ex post efficient. If the since we are in a transferable utility case, the sum of the utilities is uh, maximized, okay? And then uh, uh, we need also that uh, transfer rule be budget balancing, uh, and these two can do, so it means that the sum of the transfers should be equal to zero for all state. And of course, if you combine these two, these two properties, you, you get Pareto optimality, okay? Exposed, of course, here. Now um, <clears throat> we can we can write the utility, the expected utility of an agent, 
given a mechanism which I denote by U I S T, okay, and with this, this will depend both on the true, the true theta i, so his true type, and since here actions are just to report types, the the announced type theta i prime, okay, and um, and we the, the the main property in terms of incentives is the idea of Bayesian incentive compatibility and the mechanism is Bayesian incentive compatible if to report uh, uh, I, I, I permuted the there you have to yeah. make the put inequality on the other side huh? <laughs> if uh, reporting the true state is uh, give you a higher expected utility than uh, than uh, lying if you want Okay, so this is should be uh, reversed. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, as I said, what 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 will be uh, important here is to introduce also uh, individual participation constraints, and there are two types of uh, individual rationality that that can be examined. One is the ex ante individual irrationality. We just say that the the, the uh, expected utility ex ante, so before each individual knows its type, uh, should be above a certain level. These are the reservation utilities, u bar i, theta i, and they, they vary with i and theta i. And then a, 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 a more interesting property is uh, interim individually, individual rationality where the, the, uh, the, the constraint is, uh, <coughs> is written at the interim stage. So in terms of the conditional probability uh, of individual i, so when, when he knows his type, and when he, at the time he has to report uh, this, uh, this uh, type. Okay. Two remarks about uh, individual rationality. Of course, to imagine that you can get uh, individual rationality, you have you have to assume that there is some kind of surplus that you can uh, that you can share. Because uh, if you have no surplus, they, or it's, uh, the surplus is negative, then it will be difficult to get some individual rationality condition. And so th this is a, a lemma that was. Uh, proven by uh, Matsushima in a JET article in 2007, that for any um, any decision rule S, there exists a budget balancing transfer rule T, satisfying uh, interim individual rationality, if and only if the expected surplus conditions hold. So it goes both ways. So of course, if you have an expected surplus, you can find a balance transfer rule. So this seems quite uh, uh, natural, but it also goes the other way. So uh, that's that's a lemma that I will be I will use later. Now, uh, a, a second remark is that uh, ex ante individual rationality is uh, is e easily derived if you have a, if you have a mechanism that satisfies Bayesian incentive compatibility and budget balance. You can always uh, find new tran de design new transfers that will uh, give you, in addition, ex ante individual rationality. And this is the construction that you can do. You, you just transform. So suppose you have u bar i is this, this level of utility, so this uh, ex ante level of utility, u bar i. And it, what? I am summing over the number of players. Yeah, here, yes. Yeah, right hand, you have you ah, yes, yes, yes. You are right. This is also a mistake. Yes, this this sum of summation should should be erased. Yes, correct. So this. Ah, yes, total surplus. Yes, this this no, is just. No, no. I am sorry. I'm sorry. U bar i is just uh, this element. Okay, the the uh, the the individual element. Need a summation over i in the last. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, here, here you need. Here you have a sum over i. Yes, correct. 
Now, uh, so you can just transform the, the, the transfers in this way, and then you, you get uh, exactly that every individual will reach the level VI, okay? So that's the, uh, so in, in other words, you can always, by such a transformation, get uh, individual rationality example. This is not a new result. I mean, this is a very uh, uh, standard uh, observation, but it's, uh, so let me let me give the starting example. This this starting example, I call it the starting example because it was the example given in 1975, <laughs> and it's uh, so it is a uh, uh, very uh, easy because it's a generalization of the the uh, V.K. Clark Groves Metz mechanism, but in expectation. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so you assume here you assume that the probabilities are independent or what is sometimes called freeness okay so in other words that the conditional probability is the same for every theta i mm -hmm. and we assume also private values so this is a very si the simple case where we have independent probabilities and private values and we take uh, the <coughs> the public decision rule to be uh, efficient. Okay, so these are the three main ingredients. Then you can define the transfer in the following way. Here you have the expectations of the utilities of the others for each individual i. Okay. So in that sense, it, this is uh, really the groves, the groves part, but in expected value. And then you, you have a, a, an, an additional term which is just to balance the budget, that you introduce just to balance the budget, okay? And then you get that this, uh, with this scheme, so S star and these uh, transfers, you get uh, effi efficiency and uh, budget balance and vision incentive compatibility. So th uh, this is just uh, a reminder. And of course, after that, the, um, there was some kind of uh, extension that were made in the sense that the idea was to keep the assumption on the utility, separability, but to see whether you can, in, you can uh, increase the class of uh, probabilities or distribute of uh, subjective probabilities for which, of beliefs, for which this uh, positive result still holds. And uh, in fact, it appeared finally that there are a very, very large class of uh, probabilities for which such a result uh, holes. Thank you. Um, so here I just list uh, a certain number of them. Okay. Um, the, uh, the most recent one with Koznok and Severinov in 2008. Uh, I will concentrate on this condition, condition C, which was called the compatibility condition. And this is because it is very simple to, to handle. And, um, <coughs> but it is equivalent to a, a, a condition which is given in uh, Johnson, Pratt, and Zeckhauser, which is called link, and weak identifiability of Koznok, Koznok and Severino. Okay? So these, these, these are, but of course, all, each of these conditions uh, give you, may give you some additional results because they are stronger, so you can get additional results with so, some of these. Uh, some of these conditions. Now, <coughs> so this is condition C. The condition C is a, is a generalization of the previous condition in independence, but it's much larger than independence. And it just says that for any budget that you want to reach, mm -hmm. for any budget that you want to reach, there exists a transfer rule, which I call TC, such that you can get this budget, okay? And this transfer rule is incentive compatible. This incentive, this, uh, so in expectation, you are, if you just, it's like if you had the utilities at identically zero, if you want. So for utilities identically zero, you would be, uh, uh, you would be uh, encouraged to tell the truth. Okay, just in terms of the transfer that you are that you are receiving. That's a condition on the probability PI. And this is the only condition on the probability PI. Yes, 
the, the only thing which appears here are these, are these probabilities. So it's a condition on the probabilities. Now, you see this is a, 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 a system of linear inequalities. So you, could al you can always reformulate this condition in terms of dual conditions. And so uh, in this literature, alternatively, some people work with the dual or work with the primal. So it's, uh, it's really a matter of convenience. But this is, of course, very transparent because it just says that if your utilities were identically zero, you would be uh, encouraged to tell the truth just by receiving this uh, payment. Mm -hmm. OK, now, uh, here I use uh, the term uh, used by uh, Jean-François Mertens, automatic balance. So for any vision incentive compatible mechanism, ST, there exists another vision incentive compatible mechanism, ST prime, with budget balance T prime, if and only if condition C holds. So in some sense, conditions, the, the generality of condition C is that condition C ensure or guarantees budget balance, OK? This is not to say that uh, condition C is a necessary and sufficient condition to get uh, the, the, re the result we had in, with independent, but it's, it's the most general condition in, if you want to, to, to reach balancedness, OK? Uh, and the proof is uh, very easy for the, in one direction. The condition C, condition C holds include independence. So, so it does not depend on that yeah, then, then condition C holds, yes. And it holds even if you have one, and one individual who has independent uh, probabilities, it also holds. So you have a lot of cases where, so but what is important, and I think, is, is that C is compatible with independence, and that's important. So the proof is very easy because you use the, 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 the budget that you, you, you use the budget that you have for to, to balance the budget, to balance the, the budget, and then of course you get the, so if you take a big mechanism, you, you change the transfer thanks to condition C, you add the two types of the two transfers and you get the, the result. For the other direction, you have to construct a utility function and you make these utility functions such that the, uh, the two uh, cancel so you don't have incentives problem. And, um, and then, you, then you show that, uh, that there exists another big mechanism uh, satisfying uh, budget balance. And so condition C is satisfied for this uh, when you add the utilities and the transfer. And this is just that. So it's just... Uh, Going, going back and forth. Okay, now, <clears throat> now the 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 main one application is that with condition C, with condition C, you get the uh, you get the first you get the first best. So you can implement the the first best. Okay, and of course, by the trick I mentioned before, you can always ensure ex ante individ individual rationality. And so this, this is just uh, the idea is to take, you take the Vickray Clark Groves transfer, ru transfer rule. So this is a Bayesian, it, it's, it's incentive compatible in dominant strategy, but so it's also incentive compatible in Bayesian. And then you, you use a preceding lemma and you get the, you get what you want. Now, um, another application is to consider the, the exchange economy with L goods that is uh, considered in uh, the article by uh, Francois Forge, Jean-François Mertens, and Radu Bois in uh, Economy 2002. So you define for the, the utilities, you define the endowments, which might depend on the types, and then you define the set of feasible allocation for each for each coalition, and the mechanism is a, is a public decision rule for the coalition and transfers, and you ask that the transfer be less than or equal to zero. So there is a condition on the transfers. Now we can define the two following char characteristic function. 
in exempt payoff. This is the one, the, 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 the most uh, classical one, where you just sum, the, sum the, the, you make the sum of the utilities, okay, the, of the exempted utilities, and then uh, you, th but then you have another characteristic function where you make the same sum, but you impose Bayesian incentive compatibility. So this is, uh, so you have a, a VS, which is, of course, <coughs> smaller because you, the, 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 you have to respect the constraint of Bayesian incentive comp compatibility. And the idea is to study the, the core of this uh, new game where you have these incentive compatible uh, constraints. Now, on the standard assumption, the, 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 the core of the, 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 no, the usual game is different, is non empty. And then, on the, what the, the application, this is just to mention the application under condition C. The, the, the incentive compatible core is also non-empty, and this is uh, this is very easy to see because because of condition C, uh, v star n. First of all, uh, exemptive efficiency, because I assume that all the probabilities were strictly positive. Exemptive uh, efficiencies is uh, coincide with ex post efficiency. Now, because of uh, V star N uh, is equal to V N, because of the condition C, we get the we get that the core the, the core is non-empty. So that's a very uh, straightforward application. Uh, now, I should say that in the article, they do much more than this. Huh? They, they introduce stochastic public decision rules. They t they see what happens without condition C. And they can uh, they exhibit an example uh, of a well-behaved exchange economy in which the exempted core is empty, but this is outside the private value case and with one fully informed agent. So we, we are not we are outside the application of condition so, C. Yes. So if you have independence, then condition C will probably be satisfied for every subset. Okay. If what? If you have independence, yes. The PI, yes. Then condition C will also be satisfied for every subset. Yes. Which means then that V star and V are exactly the same. Yes, way. exactly. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, so the idea now is to so these are these are just known results, and I am, so I will. Uh, but now, what about participation constraints? Here we have, of course, very, very a lot of results which were derived. Uh, for, for the independent beliefs case. So most uh, uh, people at, at the start would look at the case where maybe thinking that it was the most uh, easy case, but in fact it will turn out that it's the most difficult case uh, to have to impose independent, independent beliefs. Now what we uh, will, will uh, consider is the, the correlated case, so the non-independent case. And uh, and this there are recent uh, recent there are some uh, recent article by Matsushima in Jet 2005 and Kosnok Severinov in Jet 2008, which do exactly that. And so I will mention the the result uh, later. So what is interesting is and this is what uh, uh, is nice is that in fact we can just modify condition C. Uh, modify condition C in a very straightforward way, and we get and we get uh, a positive result with uh, uh, interim individual rationality. So the idea is the following: instead of have of having only a budget, okay, instead of having only a budget, you introduce a budget and individual requirements R i theta i, and so you impose. The, the condition, the following conditions, for any R and a, any vector of R i that satisfy this uh, expect, expected uh, surplus condition. Okay. And so, for any all R and all R i, you need budget balance. You have the Bayesian incentive compatibility, and in addition, you have interim individual rationality with respect to the RI. Okay? 
Again, this is only a condition on the probabilities. Uh, it's only a condition on the probabilities, but then you can uh, <coughs> then you can prove that the two these two statements that condition C I R R holds. So the new condition C holds if and only if for any utility function and decision rule S satisfying the expected surplus assumption and such that ST is a, a Bayesian incentive compatible and individually rational, there exists a budget balance transfer rule such that ST is also a big mechanism satisfying IRS. So you, in some sense you use, you again, you, you again obtain what was called automatic balance. So CIIR is necessary and sufficient to balance any Bayesian incentive compatible mechanism which would, which would also which would also satisfy, thank you, which would also satisfy individual uh, rationality. So the proof is very, uh, I put the proof, I don't think we will go to the proof, but the, the, the proof is really very, uh, very simple. You, you have to define, for, for one direction, you have to define R, the big R, okay, and you just take the same ID that big R will uh, balance the surplus, the only new thing is that now you have to define the RI. You have to define the small RI. And of course, by the expected surplus assumption, the sum of the, uh, the expected value of big R is greater than or equal to the sum of the small R. Okay? So you get, uh, you get uh, what you want here. Since we, we also get uh, because of the condition, we also get uh, <coughs> Bayesian incentive compatibility. So the only the last thing to to uh, verify is that you have individual rationality, and this is like the construction of the RI. You get uh, you get this uh, this inequality, and so you get you get individual uh, individual rationality. And of course, you can prove uh, it's a little more uh, difficult than the previous case, but you can also prove that two implies one. That if any utility function, you can do that. You have uh, you be, you can derive condition C. So you have to get the reverse condition. Now, again, also, so all these are the repetition, or in some sense, of the previous result, but now with individual rationality and the modified condition C, so the, 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 the argument has, are very, very similar, so you can also get, uh, if you have efficiency, you can also get uh, <coughs> um, a budget balancing transfer rule, which is uh, Bayesian incentive compatible and satisfies individual rationality, so this, uh, this result here is, uh, the proof is the same, in fact you start with a Vickray Clark Rose mechanism, you um, you increase the transfer by any constant so that you 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 uh, you get individual rationality, and then you apply the condition and the lemma, okay, and, that, and then you, you balance the budget because of condition C. Alors, what is important is that in contrast with the original condition C, here independence of freeness is not included. And in fact, we have a, a, a condition which we can call no freeness, meaning that no agent has free beliefs over two types. Okay, so, so for all I and different types of Mr. I, uh, the probability distribution should be, should be different. Okay? This is a condition which is uh, quite known. Uh, the, this is called belief announcement in Johnson, Pratt, and Zakauza, and it's called belief determined preferences in uh, Aviad, uh, Aviad paper. <coughs> so this is an, a, a condition, but this condition is uh, is necessary if it. Yes. Is there a way? So the condition C and CIR say for every R something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is there a way to translate into finite many? Many inequalities. Can you go to the dual somehow? Or you can go to the dual. Yes. No, no, but it's finitely many inequalities or infinitely. 
No, finite limini. Everything finite. is everything so is uh, everything is finite here. The, the the number of types is finite. Everything that doesn't is. because the condition C at its state that it's for any function now. Which means for any vector. Ah, for vector. any. So yeah, there no, are many conditions. No, no, so the yeah. question is whether we go to the dual or something, this translates to finite this, conditions. Uh, this translates to finite limiting conditions, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the, this lemma just says that C proved the, the fact that C I I R R implies no freeness. So, in, in, in that sense, you. you um, <coughs> you have uh, when you impose the, the new condition C, you have uh, no no independence at all. Okay, you have the, the, the no you exclude independence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a very uh, uh, strong uh, strong uh, conclusion. I mean, a strong implication of this uh, of this condition. The proof is is it's quite easy because in fact you see that if uh, the two, um, <coughs> since by individual rationality you have that at least that one is, you have one of these should be bigger, if you take Ri so that one is bigger than the other, okay? And if you take capital R so that this is equal, okay? If you take a big R so that this is equal, you get a contradiction because you get that the sum of the T are bigger because of the individual rationality condition. You get that the sum of the T are bigger than R, which should not be because it should be equal. So, so you get a contradiction very easily. So let's uh, that we, we are going to introduce another condition. This condition could have been defined also without individual rationality. I didn't define it just to, for short, but it, and this condition was used also in the Mertens uh, in the Forge Mertens Bora paper, but without the IIR. Okay, without the IIR, and the difference is this this equality here. So the idea is that there exists a balance transfer rule. Such that for all i and all theta i, this there is a Bayesian incentive compatibility with respect to these transfers, and in addition, this is zero. The sum of this the expected here is zero. So in some sense, this is zero and this is negative, if you want. Okay. Um, <coughs> now, for any decision rule satisfying the expected surplus condition and believe satisfying this condition. There exists a budget balancing transfer rule T such that ST is a, a Bayesian incentive compatible mechanism satisfying individual rationality. Now I should say that these are the this condition uh, is related to the condition used by Matsushima and used by Koznok and Severinov, in the sense that uh, Matsushima, both conditions being uh, inspired by uh, the uh, condition of identifiability introduced by uh, uh, Fudenberg, Levin, and Maskin first in an Econometric article in the Moral Hazard uh, and Repeated Game uh, Framework, and then in a discussion paper. Is, is, is it published now, this? Ah, okay. <laughs> and then, uh, then uh, the, so the conditions used by Matsushima are stronger. Um, and, but the, and the condition used by Koznov Severinov is uh, equivalent. In fact, it's, uh, they, 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 Koznok and Severinov use a condition which is uh, a, a combination of uh, identifiability and uh, of Kramer MacLean condition. So it's a mix, it's a, it combines the two, the two aspects. But so, it, so the result I will state uh, are the, the, the same. The proof, of course, here is very simple because uh, what you do is you, you use a big M argument in the sense that uh, <coughs> if you, um, uh, <coughs> you can always, by Matsushima Lemma, to find a budget balancing transfer rule. Mm -hmm. So participation, participation holds. Okay, because of the we have assumed that we have the uh, expected surplus assumption, and then you you construct tau plus m 
times t b, and of course taking m sufficiently large will uh, will erase all the, the counter incentives, so you get incentive compatibility because you can take m very large, and because of the second condition of b, it will not affect participation, okay, because you have this is equal to zero, multiplied by m, big m, it's also equal to zero, so you don't affect participation, okay. Now, another remark is that condition B R R in past condition C R. Now, let me just mention an, an important fact is that condition, this condition, uh, because of this big M R argument, you, you will not, we, we don't require, we don't require private value. So we can have common value here. Hmm? We can introduce common value, which is, of course, uh, something uh, important. <coughs> And um, the, the last thing I want to do is to prove that this can be, these conditions are non-empty because when we had the, the, the initial condition C, we knew it was non-empty because it included uh, independence. So, uh, in fact, uh, <coughs> we can show that this is, in fact, these conditions are generic, but, let, but uh, <coughs> to show that this is not empty, I, I give a, a constructive, uh, a constructive argument, okay? And the, the constructive argument consists, you know, in um, the statistical literature, uh, just before, um, with subjective probability, they had some uh, problem of how to, to, to devise means to elicit the subjective probabilities. And the idea was to pay someone a certain amount so that he will reveal his subjective probability. And the, 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 the idea was that if you pay to someone the logarithm of his probability, he will tell the true probability. So this is, this is something which is uh, used here, but of course here we have in addition that there are several people that, are, that should reveal their probability, and that we have also the budget balance condition. So that's why we, uh, this is an, an idea in Johnson, Pratt, and Zakauza, we, we organized the uh, the, uh, we order the, 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 the agents in a, in, a, in a circular way, okay? And so we index the agents modulo n, and then we uh, define these probabilities. There are, there are, this is just an example because there are other types of uh, uh, scoring, proper scoring rule, but let's, we suppose that this is strictly positive, okay? This, this marginal over for uh, theta j, <coughs> and then, uh, and then we um, we construct this transfer scoring rule, so which involved the, the as you see the logarithm of the probabilities, okay, but we go the the trick here is to go both ways. We go we go uh, on one one round on one uh, direction, and then we go on on in, uh, in round in the other direction. Okay, so it goes both ways, and then we have these these variables in addition, and these variables should satisfy. Uh, oops, I'm going to be quickly. Uh, this variable should satisfy the the condition, the second condition of condition B, which is this uh, this uh, this set of equalities that it should be equal to zero, but we have two times theta i variables. So we have a system of two times theta i variables and theta i equations. So uh, hopefully, by moving a little the, the probability, we can find uh, we can find a, a solution. So we then solve this system in the GI in the GIs, okay? And once we have solved the system in the GIs, we have this condition which is satisfied. So the last thing is to show that. Uh, this is budget balance. No, it's not the last thing. First, you have to show that this is budget balance. This is just budget balance by construction. Okay, we, we made things such that uh, it balances. Okay, and then the last thing is to show that it is uh, Bayesian incentive compatible. And this is done by, uh, so we eliminate the terms that are constant in theta i. So this is the logarithm of the difference between the, the, the logarithm pi minus the logarithm when he says, he's announced theta i 
hat and he when he announced it, the truth at the eye okay let's say so this is for the first term this is the second term <coughs> and so this uh, we have to show that this difference is negative okay so with just sum over the theta which are not theta I plus one we get this term then we have by <coughs> Jensen inequality, we, ju we, we have that the sum, the sum of the logarithm is uh, strictly smaller than the logarithm of the sum, okay, if, uh, if these terms are, are satisfy a certain strict inequality, and each of these terms is equal to zero, because we take the, the, this, this cancel, <coughs> this cancel with that, and the, this sum is equal to one, so we both we have th two times the logarithm of one, and so we get we get zero. So by construction again, we get that this is Bayesian incentive compatible. But of course, so to, for the inequality to be strict, we need this this strict this uh, difference to be uh, to to be verified. Okay. Okay. So that's the that's the the, the end, in, and uh, so we we know that. Uh, <coughs> Now, this argument indicates because by moving the the prior, the prior probabilities a little, you can always get the conditions that I uh, that I mentioned. But in fact, there are other arguments to so. It's very important to know that we need n greater than or equal to three. So in the case n equal to, it won't it doesn't work. This condition is it does not uh, is empty for n equal to. So we need n greater than or equal to three, and the, 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 these conditions, genericity is also mentioned by Matsushima for his con for his conditions, and uh, also by Koznok and Severino for the, their conditions, which are this is equivalent. So the, this this is now I should mention that <coughs> in any case in those, all those cases we have to require no freeness, okay. We have to require no freeness, and uh, there was a, there is a, a paper by Heifetz and Neyman <coughs> that in the in the infinite case this may cause problem. Okay, in the infinite case this may cause uh, problem, but in the sense that the, 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 this condition is is quite uh, important. So what are the conclusion? Well, the conclusion is that. Uh, <coughs> The conditions on belief are helpful not only to implement the first bet, but also the exempty incentive compatible core. And of course, there it would be nice to see whether we can use the new conditions, the new condition C, I, R, R, and the B condition to get to get uh, additional results on the core huh? for the, some kind of interim core. Uh, the, the one one important thing that uh, was mentioned by uh, Rofod Klipel is that in the paper by Koznov and Severinov, they show that uh, with condition B, you can uh, get any kind of redistribution of the surplus. So in some sense, it would indicate that there is something that you could define a, a side payment games uh, for for the uh, with interim in utilities. But this is this is to be. Uh, Checked, of course. Uh, <coughs> so here, the, the, the reason why we go uh, beyond the impossibility result of uh, uh, Roger and, uh, and Myerson and Sartre Twee is that we we have more than two agents and no freeness. Okay. Uh, now there's there's still an open question. You have we have seen that we have in one side we have condition C, and we have condition D. Condition B works very well, very simple argument, the big M argument, and work for the uh, common value case. Mm -hmm. Whereas condition C cannot, do, does not work for the common value case, it works only for the private value case. So one, there is still one possibility, so the idea is if, can we avoid, can we avoid uh, no freeness? Uh, because we didn't go at the limit in some sense for in the in the C with the C conditions, uh, you can. There are. It's not a necessary and sufficient condition to get. Uh, 
It's just a necessary and sufficient condition to balance the budget, but it's not a necessary and sufficient to get all the properties. To, and so we could go further, maybe, with condition C in the private, uh, in the private uh, value case and get maybe something, uh, not in, maybe a little bit of independence. I don't know. I don't know. So that's the open question. Thank you very much. Now there is a, an urgent question. Can I ask it now? Is that you can ask you later. <laughs> <laughs> or, or at lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, the, C, the CIA arm sounds, sounds somehow like a dimension condition, but it's something full dimension. Yes. Whereas the